Hi, this is Dr. Karens, and welcome to uh, week six of high performance management. Just want to talk a little bit about the highlights of uh, week five before uh, you move on to my lecture for this week. Uh, but I enjoyed your uh, conversation that you had with each other in the forum discussion. And I was doing something else and I was thinking about what forum discussions are to me. And I wanted to use a metaphor for you uh, from a glacier and uh, use a glacier as a metaphor for how I view uh, our interactions uh, in the uh, forum discussions. A few years back, my wife and I were on a cruise to Alaska uh, and we went up the inner passageway and one morning uh, we went to Glacier Bay. Uh, and there we saw this massive uh, river of ice as it cascaded down and flowed into the bay. Although it was frozen, uh, there were chunks of ice that uh, had broken off and were in the water. And as the boat uh, positioned itself, it turned off the motors uh, and everybody stood on board with cameras raised uh, in silence. And uh, it wasn't too long when the silence would be broken by hearing some crackling of ice. Uh, and uh, as ice separated from uh, the glacier uh, river, uh, it would drop uh, with a sound of thunder uh, into the water. And uh, each chunk of ice was, was different, uh, but each experience was amazing. And you sat in anticipation and you did not weary. We could have stayed there all day uh, just experiencing and witnessing this uh, occurrence. Uh, each uh, piece of ice contains some of the same elements uh, but each was different and varied. And that's the way uh, forum discussions are as well. Uh, each of you are working with the same material, but you have different personal and professional experiences that you bring uh, to the discussion uh, that adds that robustness. And I sit uh, watching and anticipating and listening for that crackling sound of learning taking place. Uh, and then that thunderous roar uh, when everybody crescendos at the end of the week and it's uh, just exciting. And this was one of those experiences as you uh, grappled with uh, purpose-driven talent and how much is purpose, how much is drive, how much is talent. And I love asking this question uh, because I, I struggle with this as well. But one thing is certain that everybody agreed on is that talent takes a back seat or at, at very best is level with everything else. And, and I, I agree with that. I think you have to have talent, uh, but let's face it, uh, not everybody is uh, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or Tiger Woods or just an, uh, Tom Brady. Uh, use all these sports uh, individuals that have obviously great talent, but there are other individuals that uh, come along and they play uh, with a greater amount of confidence. And that, that actually is where uh, we gain a little bit of understanding of, of faith uh, in the workplace. And I like asking that question because uh, I don't give you a definition. And so you have to kind of define it and determine, well, what in the world does this mean? And what's it mean to, to be effective? And do you have to be a person of faith? And I believe that you do, but where that faith is founded upon may vary from individual to individual. Some have faith and confidence in themselves and maybe perhaps even in others. Uh, for a believer, though, that we need to have some confidence and faith in ourselves, but we also have faith in someone that can take us to a level beyond our capabilities. And that's where I, I view the difference. And we look at uh, Scripture and we find faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And one of the things about uh, I look at confidence and one of the definitions of confidence is a feeling of being certain that something will happen or that something is true. Uh, that's the basis of confidence and that my confidence rests in Jesus Christ and in God to drive me through. And so one of the elements of looking at this saying, what is the role of faith in the workplace? And, uh, and, and it's really all, all of you see that faith has a role, but you also see restrictions in terms of how that faith is lived out. How do we serve God in the workplace? And that's why I ask those questions and pose them before you uh, in a survey where I give you examples that are given out of our various faith traditions of ways that we can serve God in the workplace. It isn't necessarily standing and, and confronting or, or uh, witnessing. It, it is through our uh, skilled work. It's through us uh, applying uh, social justice uh, and being fair and uh, being just and uh, showing love and, and mercy and grace, but also uh, how do we influence culture 
uh, in that capacity. And so all these elements, I like to say that I want people to, to ask me questions about what makes you so effective uh, in your job? Why are you different than others? Why don't you get flustered when things come your way? And I got to admit, there were times when I was in the workplace that uh, I gave God credit for that. And people would look at me like saying, where in the world did that come from? And they didn't always necessarily understand. And so I picked and chose my spots. Uh, and I, I've told, I know several of you, and I do uh, this as well, that St. Francis of Sissy would say, preach the gospel with all your heart, mind, and soul. And if necessary, use words. And so words are the last thing. People view your behaviors and they judge the things you do uh, even more than the things you say. So how we live that out and we can live that out and those are ways to live that out so that when individuals see those differences we may go another step uh, with them. And then one of the pieces that I want to kind of close with too is that purpose and driven and talent. So we put talent and say, all right, maybe it's it's third in the priority order. And now we come to this number one priority or number two priority, if we want to say it that way. And maybe uh, next time I might pose the question that way. Uh, but I look at it from the aspect of millennials today are, are leaving their jobs. Their uh, turnover is happening because they're not finding meaning in the work that they're doing. They're not finding a purpose that's being satisfied uh, when they're in the workplace. And so that tells me that perhaps uh, purpose has a greater role uh, than maybe even our drive, that I'm, I'm driven to achieve and accomplish things, uh, but what is it that I want to accomplish? So I'm going to sum up this purpose, drive, and talent in one word. Rango. Rango. Think of the film Rango as it relates to how much was purpose, how much was drive, how much was talent. And, and consider that aspect. Just kind of think about that. Uh, several of you, I went back to look at your quotes. And uh, uh, no man can walk out on his own story. What in the world does that mean? Uh, Eric and Chandler uh, wrote that. Well, it, it, it means that uh, these are things that are happening in our life. And what we're about is something that we can't walk out on. It is who we are. And we have to determine who we are and choose our course in life. And Lewis wrote that. Uh, as well as finding himself uh, uh, from his experience of uh, the Spirit of the West. Uh, uh, Brigham had mentioned that, and Sam talked about also uh, the quote when uh, Rango says to the armadillo, I'm going back. And the armadillo says, but why? And Rango says, because that's who I am. What drove Rango back to the city of dirt? I leave you with that. And then uh, I'm looking at uh, the two chapters on change and worry uh, by Craig Rochelle. And uh, when I put this together, sometimes I, I structure uh, the, the readings uh, based upon uh, the weeks and how many chapters are in the book. And, uh, and this was the first that really kind of struck me. The two really go together well, change and worry. And actually, I've told some of you, uh, uh, because worry was the first chapter that I read in this book. I didn't read it from chapter one uh, through the end. I, I actually went to chapter uh, six because I wanted to know about worry because I am a worry wart and a lot of you have issues with worry and I'd like to change that and how do I go about changing that? I need God to help me but there's also as we've studied in this uh, some theories about change that might help us as well. So think about those as you're reading through and thinking about how this relates uh, to organization behavior and managing people. Thanks for making this a great learning experience. You, you stimulated my thinking this week, and I had fun with that. Have fun this week. Uh, read and listen to uh, my uh, lecture uh, for uh, what's ahead in week six. If you have any questions or concerns about anything else, uh, please email me or text me. Uh, visit me in the virtual office hours uh, every Tuesday from noon to one should you uh, like to uh, meet face-to-face. Uh, -face. Thank you. Have a blessed week.